Hey everyone, it's Mr. Bureau from Staten Island Tech. Today we're going to be talking about using layers in AutoCAD. First, I'll bring your attention over to the ribbon where the layer area presides. Um, the two main parts that you're going to be really making use of are the drop down box for controlling layers on the fly, as well as the layer properties button, which brings on the layer properties manager dialog box. Okay, so first I'm going to read through this particular thing with you over here. It says layer properties. So there are layers in AutoCAD. Layers are not what you might think they would be. Most people um, describe layers as a way of keeping things organized in CAD versus what people would think they would be if they had no familiarity with the program which is something like peeling the layers of an onion or, or arranging something to appear above another object or below another object in the model space. That is not the case. It's really, for the most part, for organizational purposes and doing a little bit more of an extra level beyond that with controlling things. So, for instance, let's just quickly discuss that every drawing starts with a layer zero. And the layer zero is typically used for just drawing normal CAD objects. So these lines are on layer zero, and this circle is on layer zero, and more or less anything else that is not specified is on a layer zero. When I hit the layer property manager here, you'll see that other layers do exist inside this drawing. One of them is called def points, one of them is called dimensions, another is called uh, doors and windows, and another one is for walls. So as you can see, there's some little icons over here that do say quite a bit about a drawing. Um, just gonna make some room so they're all visible. quite a bit, as you can see. Okay. So, those properties that are visible are whether or not a layer is on, if it's frozen, if it's locked, if it will print, the color of the layer, if not specified else uh, in, in another way, the line type and line weight, same thing as color, uh, whether or not the layer is frozen in a new viewport, which is a very complex idea. I'll talk to you about that in a few minutes. You could type a description of the layer and whether or not it shows up uh, in transparency. I entered this dialogue wanting to discuss the, the names though first. Layer zero currently is listed as the active layer. Um, and I will tell you that I created the dimension layer and I created the, the doors and windows layer and I can create the walls layer. Um, to hold those objects, dimensions, doors, windows, and walls. But as soon as I drew a dimension in CAD, and if you don't know, a dimension is um, one of these measurements over here. So these objects are all on the dimension layer, but as soon as a dimension is drawn, AutoCAD will automatically draw the def points layer into play. And that def points layer simply holds data regarding dimensions. It is not to be ever drawn on and it is not to ever be touched. The reason why that is, is again, its purpose is to just hold data and currently, and this cannot be changed, it's set to not print. So if you accidentally draw something in the def points layer, you'll see it on the screen, but it will be impossible to print anything on that layer. So please be careful. The drop down at the top will always tell you what layer you're in. So currently I'm in layer zero. If I change that to let's say the doors and windows layer and I start drawing, now I'm actually drawing objects on the doors and windows layer. And as you can see, they're appearing green because the default color for the doors and windows layer is green. And in my property area, I have my color set to by layer. Instead of choosing a specific color, which I can do, like maybe I'll just choose the color um, magenta, and then I'll draw a circle. That circle is on the door and window layer, but it's not colored by layer, it's colored just with the color magenta. Okay? So like, that's a weird thing. 
the color of an object, the line weight of an object, and the line type of an object can all be controlled as a bi-layer property, which means they inherit the properties of the layer set here. Color, line type, and line weight. Very, very important for you to understand that. Okay, I think you get the idea with that. Maybe I want to switch what layer an object is on. So these green lines here, if I were to select them and I want to put them on the wall layer, I just have to hit this drop down with them active and click walls. And then when I hit escape, you can see that these are now on the wall layer. I'm still drawing on the door and window layer, but if I click this object, you see it's contained on the wall layer which is pretty impressive how quickly you can do that. So again, you just select an object, change its layer in the dropdown, and that's now the layer it belongs to. Very, very, very nice to see something like that. Let's go over here now, and I'm gonna walk through this particular thing. So it says, the simple floor plan room alpha appears to the left. Each item in the drawing appears on a different layer. The standard practice for architectural plans is that you do use layers for organizational purposes. Layers are used to keep things organized, like I said. Uh, select the Properties Manager to perform the following actions. So, without changing anything on the screen here, I'm gonna hit the Property Manager. We go back to Layer 0. Bring up that thing, and I'm gonna do what it says. It says, change the line weight of doors and windows to 0 0.2. So, I'll go to Doors and Windows, and I'll change the line weight to 0 0.2. Hit OK. So now you can see they did get a lot thinner on the screen. Change the color of doors and windows to yellow. So I'll click on the color. I'll change it to the yellow, which is uh, color number two. And you can see the doors and windows all change to yellow. Next, it says change the line weight of the walls to 0.3. So go to my wall layer over here, and I'll change that line weight to 0.3, which is a much thicker line. And as you can see, they did get that way. Change the color of the walls to magenta. And here they are, as magenta. And then lastly, it says to turn off the magenta layer and to lock the walls layer. Turning off a layer means you actually can't see it. So if I click on the dimension layer and click the little light bulb to turn it off, you can see those dimensions do disappear. And I'm going to close this for now just to show you that I can control that from here as well. So the dimension layer is currently off, but I can turn it on or off just by clicking the little light bulb from the quick drop down. And then it says to lock the walls layer. So I'll do that here as well. I'll click on the lock icon you can see it does get a little darker on screen, but more importantly, I can't select it anymore to do anything. So if I wanted to do something here, as soon as I hover my mouse over it, it shows a little lock icon to show that the item is in fact locked and I can snap to it if I want to. That's not a problem. I just snap that line to it or I'll snap the circle to the edge of the wall here but I can't accidentally erase it or move it or anything like that. So even if I select it, it doesn't let me do anything to that particular layer because it's locked and that can be quickly undone with that button right there. The other options that you might see besides lock and turning a layer on and off, again, lock does prevent things from being modified and you can still see them. Freezing a layer is a little bit different. So if I go ahead and freeze a wall layer, by turning the sun off to a, a snowflake, it does disappear just like turning a layer off, but it's a little bit different. Freezing a layer is more important. It's, it's not only doesn't show the objects, but actually pulls them out of memory. So if your drawing gets completely filled with millions of millions of objects, sometimes you want to control memory a little bit and freeze groups of layers together to allow you to navigate in a much smoother way. But I wouldn't recommend doing that anytime soon, if at all, in this class. Plotting a layer, as I said before, if I turn the plot on and off, it'll prevent a layer from printing or, or, or allow it to print. Uh, turning it on, again, is just a visibility. They, those stay, they still stay in memory that way, though. Plot style, 
which is not displayed on this particular dialog box, but it's something that is uh, part of layers, will change to, to make it print in a different way. No one ever uses that function, so please avoid it. And then lastly, transparency. You can actually control the transparency of a layer using the option within the layer property manager. And that's just a numerical value from zero to 90, which you can set by a dropdown or you can type. It's pretty interesting to have that function kind of tucked away in the layer properties, but it is there. So I suggest a few things. One, I suggest using layers for organizational purposes. So again, in architecture, you put plumbing on a layer, electrical on a layer, furniture on a different layer. Maybe you wanna have the walls of different floors on different layers, so you can quickly turn them on, on and off if they're stacked upon each other, especially if this is going to be a 3D drawing. Um, you can use layers for controlling the order of appearance on a screen, but that's not a direct thing. If you just click any CAD object and right click over here, you see draw order, and, and that is the way you would control the way uh, things appear on a screen. So if you have like, let's say a circle in the background over here, and I wanted to color that circle um, a certain color. So I'll make it solid and let's say like red or something. And that coloring, I'm gonna make sure it's sending to the back. So when I move it over here, you can see that the wording doesn't in fact appear in front of it. But if I were to right click it and pick for the, I'm sorry, pick the, for the draw order to bring it to the front, Sometimes you have to do it a few times. Yep, there it is. It does appear in front of the text. Okay, so that's the draw order. Colors and line types and line weights, you definitely want to control through organization purposes. That's why this by layer thing is the default color and default line type and default line weight. Do that in conjunction with your organization, especially when it comes to doing annotations in a drawing. So sometimes like when you're doing annotations, you want to have uh, hidden lines, sometimes you want to have center lines and object lines all appear on different layers. Use the locking feature often, maybe use the, the plotting feature often, maybe you want to hold things from pr printing on one particular drawing just because you want to have notes to yourself or something. The locking mechanism is also very important for when you're doing a long-term drawing and you want to have certain stages of it locked down. And then lastly, like I was saying before, that by layer thing in conjunction with the organization is very, very useful. Um, so go ahead and use layers. I encourage the use of them very often. I will require the use of them, but for the most part, uh, you'll become a stronger CAD user by thinking of different ways to use the layers on your own. Thank you very much.